Caribbean Newsline is brought to you by the Barbados Tourism Marketing Inc. Fresh industrial action planned for next week in Grenada. That's our top story in Caribbean Newsline for Friday, November 30th. From the CMC News Center in Bridgetown, I'm Nicole Best. Good evening. Teachers in Grenada are planning fresh protest actions following government's decision to deduct money from their salaries for the days they went on strike in the last three weeks. This time, they are planning to engage in work to rule beginning on Monday. The decision was taken at an executive meeting of the Grenada Union of Teachers on Thursday and was sent out in a memo to shop stewards across the country. In an exclusive interview on the telephone with CMC News on Friday, President of the Grenada Teachers Union, Lydon Lewis, said the union is prepared for the long haul on this matter. The teachers started industrial action in the first week of November and continued for three weeks, only returning to the classrooms last week when it was announced that negotiations will resume between the unions and the Government Pension Committee. There were concerns raised about the effects of the strike on students, prompting some students to stage a protest of their own, calling for teachers to return to the classrooms. Lewis says the union is also concerned about the effect of their actions on the students, but maintains that it is necessary. Necessary. We apologize for not having these inserts for you, but we will get back to this story a little later on. We're moving now over to Dominica, where the Public Service Union, the PSU, says it will seek a 10% salary increase for its members over the period 2018 to 2021. General Secretary Thomas Leetang said that the PSU uh, general membership met on Thursday and gave the executive the green light to seek the salary increases, adding that the union would be seeking a one-time bonus for public workers as part of the new collective agreement. Lee Tang says the union is also looking for a review of all allowances paid to public officers, some new allowances, and certain improvements in working conditions for nurses. He said the union will not be going for a recurring salary increase for the first year. Instead, they will be seeking a one-time bonus equivalent to two months salary and 5% increase each year for the second and third years. Still in Dominica, government says it is now finalizing an agreement that will allow for the construction of a 130-room hotel on the outskirts of the capital as part of an initiative to build a new Dominica following the passage of Hurricane Maria last year. Prime Minister Roosevelt Skerritt says the initiatives being undertaken include the construction of the Marriott Hotel on the site of the current Public Workers Department. Skerritt said there are also plans to construct a new container port with the modern technology, and he gave the assurance that Dominica will have its international airport. In July, Skerritt said that a contract for building an international airport could happen by mid-2019, noting then that his administration firmly believes that this airport will enhance the island's economic and social development. The Dominica Prime Minister told constituents that it will require the concerted commitment of all to ensure the country realizes its dreams and visions. Guyana's opposition, Barrett Jack Dude, as the opposition leader, is raising concerns over the year's budget ahead of the start of debate on this year's fiscal package. And he says the measures do not go far enough in addressing several critical issues. 
Barbados celebrated its 52nd anniversary of political independence from Britain on Friday, with Prime Minister Mia Motley saying the island has regained its ability to punch above its weight. Motley, the island's first woman Prime Minister, told citizens gathered at the parade ceremony at the Kensington Oval that Barbados shall forever be friends of all and satellites of none, in an apparent reference to the present economic situation facing the island, which had to seek support from the International Monetary Fund, the IMF, in a bid to turn around an ailing economy. Motley told the nation that her administration is planning a grand celebration for all... I'll take that again. Motley told the nation that her administration is planning a grand celebration for all Barbadians in 2020, as it would coincide with her administration's perfection for the brightest possible Barbados. And still in Barbados, in his first ever independence message, opposition leader Bishop Joseph Athley noted that as the island aspires to the achievement it contemplates over the next several decades, there is need to resist any national posture which denies or defies the guidance the country has relied on for the past 300 years. He said part of the sober reality is that Barbados continues to expose mothers, sisters, daughters to the erosion of their dignity through forced economic relationships, workplace exploitation, and indecent wages. And he said the island has failed the morality test when it continues used to boast of growing employment numbers while far too many experience the reality of persistent underemployment and the absence of job enrichment. Among those being honored to mark the occasion were a distinguished early childhood educator, a retired business executive, and a former chairman of the Electoral and Boundaries Commission. Caribbean nationals are urged to get to know their HIV status as the region prepares to observe World AIDS Day on Saturday. That story and more when we return. A gift to you. The stars are coming. Hennessy and FAS 7 Star present Hennessy Artistry. Saturday, December 1st, Kensington Oval. Doors open at 7, showtime 9 p.m. Trey Songs. Two Mile Hill. Luciano, Romaine Virgo, Popcorn, and Shabarang. Hennessy Artistry, Saturday, December 1st, Kensington Oval, the 10th anniversary. Hennessy, never stop, never settle, drink responsibly. We return to the story about the industrial protest in Grenada where the teachers are planning fresh protest action following government's decision to deduct money from their salaries for the days they went on strike in the last three weeks. And this time, they are planning a work to rule. Well, in an in exclusive interview with CMC's News on Friday, President of the Grenada Teachers Union, Lydon Lewis, said the union is prepared for the long haul on this matter. We'll, we will go as long as a year or until government makes a decision either to return the salary or work with us to, to have it returned. 2017, uh, the teachers started industrial action in the first week of November and continued for three weeks, only returning to the classrooms last week when it was announced that negotiations will resume between the unions and the government pension committee. And there were concerns raised about the effects of the strike on the students, prompting some students to stage a protest of their own, calling for the teachers to return to the classrooms. And Lewis says the union is also concerned about the effect their actions are having on the students, but he maintains that it is necessary. Teachers have gone over and above. And if you look from a quick calculation of what we do as teachers in Grenada to support the education system, we believe 
we extend more than a million dollars into maintaining schools and, and, and activities of school for, on a yearly basis or annually. But remember, the, the children are also the, the nation's children. And, and when teachers lose salaries and they lose monies, the, the students are also impacted. And we believe that the way the government went ahead and deducted the salary was done with, with malice and, and to prove a point. And so the union is forced to, to respond to this. Well, the negotiations between unions and the pension committee are expected to resume on December 9th. And we asked Lewis whether the union considered their work to rule an action in bad faith ahead of the resumption of the talks. And he said that that is a separate matter. Of the industrial action. So they said it's, it's a separate issue. Um, they, they are responding to the fact that we, we took strike action, as they said. So we are responding. The action we are taking is not as a direct result of the, of the issue with gratuity. It is in response to the docking of our pay. The 30th observance of the World AIDS Day will be on Saturday under the theme know your status and the objectives of this year's observance are to urge people to get tested in order to know their hiv status and to access hiv prevention treatment and care services it will also focus on urging policy makers to promote a health for all agenda for hiv and related health services such as tuberculosis hepatitis and non-communicable diseases director of un aids for latin america and the caribbean dr cesar nunez in his regional address says everyone has a responsibility to learn their status. In 2017, nearly 90% of new infections in the Caribbean occurred in four countries, Cuba, Dominican Republic, Haiti, and Jamaica. 87% of deaths from AIDS-related illnesses occurred in the Dominican Republic, Haiti, and Jamaica. And Haiti alone accounted for nearly half of new HIV infections and deaths due to AIDS-related illnesses. But despite these statistics, the UN AIDS Latin America and the Caribbean Office is reporting moderate progress on both prevention and treatment. Its recent publication titled Miles to Go states that the annual number of new HIV infections among adults in the Caribbean declined by about 18 percent from 110 to that's from 2010 to 2017 and deaths from AIDS related illnesses declined by 23 percent over the same period. In Jamaica, a secondary school student died at hospital four days after arsonists set fire to her family's home in the parish of St. Andrew. Police said that Taishe Monday, a 15-year-old student of the St. Hughes High School, died at the Kinston Public Hospital on Thursday following the fire that destroyed the three-bedroom house. They said Taisha and her mother sustained severe burns to their bodies and uh, were admitted in serious condition. The grandmother received minor burns to her right hand and was treated and released. And the police say that the family was awakened on Sunday night by the fire and that while all six occupants managed to escape through a window, Taishe, her mother and grandmother were injured and taken to hospital. The police have given no motive for the incident and they are continuing their investigations. The principal of St. Hughes High School, Dr. Elaine Cunningham, described Taisha as an honor roll student, a member of the cheerleading team, and loved by all. And she said that teams from the Ministry of Education are assisting with counseling sessions at the school. Uh, Bangladesh reached 259 for five after winning the toss and choosing to bat on the opening day of the second and final test against West Indies. That's ahead in Newsline Sports. Stay with us. We're going to turn it up a notch. Tennessee and FAS 7 Star present Tennessee Artistry on the Beach Sunday, December 2nd. Deckery Beach. Performing live. Spice. Spice. Sham. Rankin King. Mole. Stiffy. Just D. And Little Rick. 
Plus World DJ, Rio Suave, King Ghetto, Scott and Mally Fresh, Hutchinson, DJ Ross, Ramon G, Kamal Banki, DJ Puffy, and Jaguar DJ. Tennessee Artistry on the Beat. Sunday, December 2nd, Zachary Beat, 4 p.m. to 11 p.m. Tennessee, never stop, never settle. Drink responsibly. <laughs> Bangladesh reached 259 for five after winning the toss and choosing to bat on the opening day of the second and final test against West Indies at Sheer Bangla National Stadium in Dakar on Friday. Shadman Islam made 76, Shakib Al Hassan 55 not out, and Mominal Hawk and Mohammed Mithun both made 29. Devin Jabishu took two for 69. Here are some of the highlights. We apologize for not being able to bring those highlights for you at this point in time, but we continue with the sport where West Indies star Sunil Narayan slammed a half century for Bengal Tigers, but Chris Gale's Kerala Knights still managed to beat them by seven wickets in the T10 League in the United Arab Emirates on Friday. Sent in Tigers got up to a competitive 123 for five off their allotted 10 overs, with the left-handed Narayan top scoring with 52 of 25 balls, and West Indies selectee Shafin Rutherford chipped with 39 of 17 deliveries. The pair put on a rousing 57 of 27 balls for the second wicket after Tigers lost England's look right for a nine in the third over with the score on 35. Narayan belted four fours and sixes while Rutherford, who toured India for the T20 series last month, both failed to play a match, punched four fours and three sixes. In reply, Gail crunched two fours and a six in 19 off 10 balls. But it was England's Johnny Bairstow, fresh from the Test Series win over Sri Lanka last week, who fired Knights to victory with a splendid T20 record high, unbeaten 84 off 42 balls with six fours and eight sixes. West Indies left hander Nicholas Puran, meanwhile, kept up his excellent run of form with an unbeaten. 45 of 18 deliveries as his northern warriors chased down a modest 65 to beat Rajputs by seven wickets with 25 balls to spare. Chief Operations Officer of the Caribbean Premier League, Pete Russell, says he expects that women will eventually be integrated into the biggest party in sport. His comments have come following a recent plea by West Indies batsman Brittany Cooper at the conclusion of the Women's T20 World Cup for the CPL to reject cricket as being just a gentleman's game and incorporate women into the annual tournament. The West Indies, who were defending champions, crashed out at the semi-final stage to eventual winners Australia. The regional side was widely in consistent with the bat throughout the tournament and claim they were at a disadvantage to their Australian, English and Indian counterparts who play much more cricket year round. Russell told the Newsday that the CPL had taken notice of the successful staging of the Women's World T20 in the Caribbean which attracted large crowds at Providence Stadium, Darren Sammy Cricket Ground and Saviv Richards Stadium in Antigua. He said women's cricket being part of CPL had been discussed before and said it would happen eventually. The second edition of the Round Jamaica Yacht Race is on this weekend and we will bring you that information and more when we return in on, on Monday. Stay with us. That's the end of the sport. We'll be right back. Caribbean Newsline is brought to you by the Barbados Tourism Marketing Inc.
Next time on Coalition Corner, standing up for human rights. We're not going to get there if we don't start looking at stigma and discrimination and providing legal ways of persons getting redress when they face stigma and discrimination. Should government take the lead? As we speak about our creating an enabling environment, it has to be government driven. There are persons who need access care, who need to be nurtured in care, they need to be welcomed in care. Don't miss the next Coalition Corner. Again, the major developments of this day. Teachers in Grenada are planning fresh protest action from Monday following government's decision to deduct money from their salaries for the days they went on strike in the last three weeks. Union leader Lydon Lewis says they will engage in work to rule, which they are prepared to continue for at least a year. And in sport, Bangladesh reached 259 for five after winning the toss and choosing to bat on the opening day of the second and final test against West Indies at Sher Balang. Uh, National Stadium in Dakar on Friday. That's Caribbean Newsline. For news and sport around the clock, subscribe to KanaNews.com. We'll be back here again on Monday. But from all of us at CMC News, thank you for watching. Do have yourselves a good night.